Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Concrete AI, um, the first one in this Volvo shooter called the Scanner. So we will be implementing that uh, specific AI. And in the following videos, we will be uh, creating the two additional AIs um, that together they make up the full AI of um, the survival shooter agent or the little boy. So um, before we get started um, we just delete the one from the previous video. We made this example AI just to show the different building blocks. We don't need that anymore so let's just go ahead and remove that one. And then we have a fresh canvas so that we can start anew. So again the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new AI. So Let's do new, and we call this um, player scanner. I'm just going to call it two because we already have one called player scanner down here, which is the finished version. Now this is going to be a very simple AI, but also a very central AI. Now, as mentioned in one of the previous videos, we have this very central component called the context and the context represents uh, the knowledge that the AI uses to do whatever it needs to do. But the context on its own doesn't do anything. It is it doesn't contain anything unless it is actually un unless stuff is actually put into it. So the first thing we want to do is actually put information into the context such that the other AIs can use this information to make their decisions. Now, as mentioned, this is going to be a very simple AI because it doesn't actually have to make any decisions. It just has to run at a set interval so that it can refresh the context with the information that matches whatever uh, our little guy sees in the game world. So the choice between which selector we, we want to use doesn't really matter because it is not actually going to select um, based on any logic of the qualifier it is simply going to execute the default action every time. So what we have to do is we have to decide what action to execute and this action is actually scanning the environment for different things. We have three different things that we are interested in. If you recall we have a context. This context has, apart from the player itself, it has a reference to enemies, power-ups, and positions that we can move to. So these are the three things that we want to scan for and to fill into the context. To do that we're going to add an action as the default action and we're going to make that a composite action. We will call this scan. And you can also uh, rename the default action, if you show choose, to something similar. There we go. So we need to have um, some additional actions this is a composite action, so we want to have the actual actions to execute. Now we've already created these actions, we're going to look at them in just a second. But click on the plus, and then you will have all the actions that you've created available to select. So what we want to select here is we want to select all of the different scan actions. So we're going to have scan for enemies, we're going to have scan for power-ups, and scan for positions. Now the order of these, in this case, the order is not relevant. Obviously you may have composite, if you do use composites, they will be executed in the order in which they appear here. So if there is an order element to them, then you should order them accordingly. As with any other list, you can simply drag uh, them using the handles here to reorder them. 
so um, as you can see we have these three actions two of them have no options or no properties to set at all scan for enemies and power-ups scan for positions though they it has some uh, properties that you can set um, like here we have a sampling density and we have a sampling range so this means that this um, scanner will look 12 meters around uh, our little boy with an an interval of 1.5 meters and then it will sample points that could be relevant for our little hero to move to. The others will also scan. The radius of their scan is not defined on the action itself here, but rather they are defined on the actual uh, player. So if we just move to him real quick you can see we have our player object and it exposes a scan range which will then govern uh, how far they scan. This could have been placed on the actions themselves as well. That is again entirely up to you. So that's actually it. That's a very simple AI. Um, we're just gonna... Oh, it's actually it is has already saved. Um, so let's have a look at how we have implemented the different scans. This isn't really part of the AI as such, um, but just an implementation detail. But we'll look at them anyways. So here we have the scan for entities, which has actually been renamed to scan for enemies. As you can see, you can apply a friendly name to your entities and to your properties and an explanation of what they do. Um, so that that is how they will show up in uh, the inspector. You can also leave it without this and they will just use the class name. So what does this do? Well as you can see it derives first of all from an action base class. This base class uh, will uh, require you to implement one method called execute and the execute method will be given the context so that you can uh, act according to whatever data is in the context. In this case, we're actually not going to act on data in the context, but rather we're going to fill the context with data. So this is what we do. In this case, we are going to manage the enemies list. So we start by clearing the enemies list. We then look at uh, the surrounding area within the scan radius of the player. And we look at the enemies layer and then for each of the colliders we find there, we will then get a reference to that entity. This is again an implementation detail that you can look into yourself uh, in the demo, how we use, how we manage entities using the Entity Manager. Um, but what this does is simply it gets reference to the entity uh, given its game object and then it adds that entity to the enemies list. So now our context will have uh, a number of enemies in there so that our AI can actually use that to make decisions, for instance, to choose which target to attack. The same goes for power-ups. It is not exactly the same, but very similar. It simply scans for power-ups instead of enemies. And then we have the position scanner, which again does a similar thing. In this case, however, it just samples positions on the now mesh. We have uh, used the Unity now mesh for this example, um, since we do not require people to use Apex Path. So instead, we have uh, used the built-in now mesh for those that do not own Apex Path. Obviously, this could also have been done with Apex Path. So that's it for the scanning. We now have a context that is being filled with relevant information for the AI at an interval so that the other AIs can act according to that information. So that's it for this video. In the next video we'll be looking at how we implement the AI for moving the player around.